What is up, everybody? I am back. It is a new year. I'm joined by my two furry co-hosts, Jane, which you can't see her probably, Miyagi hanging out over there. We're going to talk some stocks for a little bit to start the year. Episode 18 for the week of 1321. We're here. All right, before we jump into it, hey, uh, give us a sub here. Give my, me and my dogs a quick sub here on YouTube. I appreciate that. Uh, there'll be a link like top right or something like that. Look for that eye icon. Hit that. But also real underscore bullish. Follow socially. You know, hey, let's engage. Let's talk some shit. Talk some stocks. Talk some sports. Whatever the fuck comes up. It's fun to engage with people. Uh, it feels feels less lonely doing it like that. So I appreciate it. Um, also, hey, this is only my opinions. Do your own due diligence. Everything is IMO. Hey, I'm just giving you what I'm seeing, what I'm thinking about playing. Not necessarily playing uh, a good amount of them. I don't, you know, but I'm watching. These are my watch lists for the week. All right. I'm going to make these quick. I'm going to start making these even quicker, quicker, quicker. All right, we're going to jump into DocU. And the reason why I like DocU, hopefully you can see my screen. If not, I'm kind of fucked. DocU has been a high flyer for 2020. Uh, it had a really hot 2018. Took a little break in 2019 and then a big hot 2020. Uh, this one is up to about 200%, 226% for the year. The reason why I'm, I've been calling out DocU for a little bit, though, for the past two weeks, because for the past two or three weeks, I've seen a lot more... Uh, or increase um, like people amount of people talking about it specifically. I saw this one in Motley Fool. If you don't if if you don't read or listen to Motley Fool, I definitely recommend the Motley Fool podcast. It's super good. This was in their 2020 roundup, so it was in the show two weeks ago. And then it was in the show this week, uh, so really good. And they're talking about it specifically on how they pivot themselves moving forward. Talking about their competition, like Adobe Sign. Basically, their the synopsis for them. They were saying, hey, this is something to watch. Basically, DocuSign is making a lot of really good acquisitions and plays to really position themselves as the only disruptor to themselves, you know? Uh, so I thought that was really interesting how they're going into not just like signing documents, but the analytics behind documents and stuff like that, making people's lives easier. So I thought that was a pretty cool. Um, and yeah, looking for more cool stuff to continue into the year. The reason why I, ca I called it out two weeks ago, uh, sorry, this last episode uh, specifically, but I called it out as something I'm watching, not necessarily playing. And what I wanted to see, what I called out last time is this was really hard resistance at 246 here. And I wanted to see what it was going to do at that line. Uh, I wanted to, what I was going to do is I was going to, if it broke this line, as you see, I'm looking at the week level right now. Hopefully you can see my screen if not, I'm kind of fucked. But if you look at, at the week level, the week level, I don't know why it won't zoom in. Zoom in. Okay, it doesn't want to zoom in. I was having that issue earlier. But anyways, at the week level, maybe I'm already zoomed in as much as I can. Yeah, I'm already zoomed in a bunch. Okay, so anyways, at the week level for the past one, two, three, four, five. So about the past you know month, month and a half, and even beyond that, right? It, that this line right here, two forty seven ish. Let's call it two forty seven ish. Has been my lines are shitty. It has been really heavy resistance. So I wanted to see what it was going to do at that line. If it would have broke it, that would have been one thing. I would have probably played the break of it, but it didn't. It bounced off of it, which is what I wanted because I wanted it to come down to an area that it has been consolidating for the amount the same amount of weeks so the past like two or three months uh two months and a half it's been consolidating at this line right here of 199 so it has it's, it's been bouncing between 200 and basically 246 there's a lot of area in that you know what 50 bucks to play with there but so like you see my lines here i have an alert set up to say hey when it drops to here look at it again this is exactly what i wanted to happen with docu uh you know uh, so, you know, also what, one thing to consider is it hasn't had a lot of volume trading yet. Uh, so, you know, it had big run ups and then you haven't seen volume come in basically for the past month, based, uh, like one way or another. You kind of had some selling volume after the bullish volume. That's fine. But also the RSI is going down. Right. So we saw that last week, you know, it was kind of like playing with this area. Didn't know if we wanted to break or not. But the RSI is going down, which basically, like, hey, we talked about between 30 and 70 are the two pivot points generally for stocks. 30 is over sold so people are selling it 70 is overbought people are buying it this is trending more to the sell off area macd is also getting more bullish at the week level as you know i look at the week level another one i look at is the day level and same for the day level it's just falling off a fucking cliff in terms of like this really hard double top here at 251 right uh, so it hadn't really got all the way to 246 so it broke it but it didn't stay above it and that's what i was looking for that was 1222 so that was what is that two weeks ago now 
Yeah, about two weeks ago. Yeah, it hit that. It didn't want to, it, you know, it had a, you know, a, a bearish thing here. It had a double top start trading down for the day. And basically, hey, it's it's breaking now. It's Now it's breaking moving averages. It's breaking. I look at the 10, I looked at 25, the 50, and the 200. It's broke all three of those motherfuckers still going down. So hopefully it finds some support at 213. If not, I will look at it at the 200 level to see where it's going to come out. But man, it's looking bearish as fuck. The only bad, the only thing is there's no volume yet. You know, so we haven't had volume since basically 12.4, which was a lot of bearish volume. Uh, and then it kind of sold off. It, you know, it didn't break the channel. What I like about it, it's in a clear channel and it's respecting it so far. Even though it broke out of this lower channel, these are bad channels, but basically it broke out of this channel here. It looked like it was going to make higher, low, 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 higher lows. Basically, here's a low. Here's a low. It's higher than that. Here's a low. It's higher than that. It just didn't have the momentum to do it. No volume came in basically to support it. It's falling off a cliff at the week level, at the day level. But I love it because I have a, that's exactly what I wanted to happen for myself. Um, so, hey, you know, you play, everyone plays it their own way. Even if you break it down to the hour level, the 30 minute level, however way you look at it, it's in a clear fucking sell off. And that sell off really, really happened when it broke over, didn't have support. And then started breaking the same. Hey, what's up? 246. You know, it started just after it broke 246, people were looking at, at the at support. Once it broke that, motherfuckers just sold off. Like, Fuck it. Whatever. Let's get out of here. Uh, it's holding for right now at this, you know, 221 level. We'll see how it does. I want to see, like I say, go bend down a little bit more. And I'm going to look into it. But I think that there's no matter what price you're going to get it at, I think that it's going to be a really strong sector. A very it's it's in a really strong sector. It's not just a COVID play, it's a beyond COVID play. As people shift from being paper to being digital, I think DocuSign is going to be really good. And for me, it's about getting the best price possible at the best entry point. I never time things correctly ever, uh, but I want to get it at the best price possible. Another one that was called out uh, I wanted to talk about was NET. And it's a weird one because the ticker is NET, NET, but it's actually Cloudflare. And it was also called out on the Motley Fool podcast. I'm telling you, watch podcasts. Stock is always just education. Just learn. Just fucking uh, like try to get information. It just absorb shit. You know, you don't have to absorb everything. But you know, I'm going around. I'm cooking. I'm running. I'm doing something. I'm listening to podcasts. And say, oh, cool, Docky. Let me just write that doctor that down real quick. Oh, Cloudflare. Let me jot that down to look at it later. Uh, these are just. I think they mentioned like eight of them. These are two that I I pulled out that I was like, these are ones I want to look at more. Oh man, that protein shake is good. I just did a, a quick leg day and I did in a three mile run. So I am smoked right now, but I wanted to make this uh, before I start working and stuff. But anyways, Cloudflare also called out by the Motley Cool that we talked about. They're a network infrastructure play. And why is that important? And I really wanted to get into a network infrastructure play, because security play even rather, uh, because after that whole Russia hacking thing into solar uh, solar winds, what a month ago or so, or so uh, I think that security, specifically network security, is going to be an increased uh, relevance, especially as the government releases more funds when 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 Joe Biden gets into office, probably to to combat like network infrastructure security hardening and stuff. So I think that Cloudflare is in a really good spot for that. They just IPO'd, I think nine nine because I didn't see much before. You know, if I zoom out, yeah, 916 or whatever was basically, I think, their first trading deal. So relatively new in terms of trading. Uh, one nine. Uh, so yeah, relatively new in terms of trading. So yeah, I think they started the week of, you know, 916 publicly trading. But anyways, relatively new in terms of like a, a, a company that's publicly traded, but still, I think something that's fresh and has a lot of momentum going, especially with like, like I said, security being more heightened, right? Uh, I, I think it's selling off right now, which is perfect because it was kind of too extended. Uh, if I look at the week level, this is just something I look how I, this is kind of like how I look into stocks. I look at the week, I look at the day, I break it down to a, a 30 minute maybe, or an hour. Or one of my, one of my buddies on uh, Twitter basically said, Hey, I look at it at the 30 minute level. I was looking at the five minute level, which is stupid pretty much. Uh, so I think that, you know, you don't make it too complicated. Look at the week chart, look at the day chart, maybe look at a 30 minute uh, hour chart or something to get really strong signals or as strong as you can get them. Uh, so it was to me too far extended after it came out and busted this 10, 10 EMA. I like it when a stock is basically like touches the 10 EMA that first line's a 10 and then and then goes off of it but once it gets too far extended as we saw with Cloudflare it was you know for the past one two three four five six seven eight so basically for two months it was just extending super far off of that 10 EMA it's gonna have to like correct and take some you know you see a double top here basically you, you could argue that it was more than a double top but let's just say it's a bearish double top basically hey it tops and what I mean by that it tops out here it tops out here and then starts selling off 
Um, basically, you know, uh, even a spinning doji to a, a double top. It's a, anyway, it's fucking bearish as shit. It was going to sell off, which is you can argue it needed to because it was so far rocking. But I like to see that. Hopefully it touches this 10 EMA and rolls off of it. The reason why I, I did the alert here is because when I was looking at it, basically, um, with, yeah, just when I was looking at it, that seemed like a really good area to get to start looking back into it because it's respected this before. Uh, but also what I wanted to do was a quick Fibonacci retracement. And ba I'm not going to explain what Fibonacci retracement means, but basically, uh, you know, you can use it to be defensive and offensive. I use it defensively for this one to say, where do I think the bottom is going to be? And I use a Fibon like something like tools like a Fibonacci retracement as ways, as another indicator to help me plan what I'm going to do. And not necessarily it's at this line. I'm going to do it at this line. It's all general. These are all self-fulfilling prophecies. The only reason they work is because people think that they work, you know? Uh, but when I look at the fib and I say, hey, starting here when the trend rises to where it stops, where do I think it's going to stop? And just so happens that I had already had this line marked as an alert. You can see the alert here. I already kind of had that marked. But anyways, uh, it supported with the 10 EMA. It supported with a Fibonacci. And hopefully, you know, we see a bounce or correction here. But this is where I feel comfortable starting to look again to see what it's going to do. I want to see it touch this line here and then roll off. If it if it dies a little bit here, that's fine. I wouldn't have traded this before because you see, this is so relative. I know this is new because these blue lines mean, you know, basically it's like the charting software is building uh, what the what the average is. So now that I have averages, like trading volume over average, now I feel more comfortable trading it. It isn't a sell-off still. Like you see this bearish volume coming in. And I think you'll see bearish volume until it hits this level and people decide what they want to do with it. Um, so, you know, it's selling off. You see this clear sell-off here. It's hopefully touching this 10 EMA on the week. Like I said, it doesn't have a bearish volume over average, but it's pretty fucking close, you know? And also this RSI, as we talked about, 70 is over bought. It was way over 70, but that's great because it can go, you know, 83 and still make gains. Fine. It's all relative to the stock, but it's selling off basically. Also this MACD looks like it wants to converge as we saw macd is moving average convergence divergence it's converting to be bearish uh going from there so yeah we see that here also if you break it down the week level it was bullish as fuck it was making higher lows higher lows higher highs and higher lows so basically this is a low this is a you know a, a low this is a uh, well sorry this is a low this is a low this is a, it's making higher low so it was fucking bearish or bullish as fuck for a long time and now it's just gonna have to correct Perfect for me, though, because I'm going to look at it and, and try to get in, try to time. A, it's really hard to time a bottom. But basically, even at the day level, hey, this bitch is selling off hard RSI going down. This is going down. But hopefully it starts running to this line here, like about 70 bucks. And then we, we can make a really good correction. But it's something that I'm still going to watch that. Now, I will say that um, it, was, it was far extended. So it's correcting. Also, it's about we're about three dollars from where the average Yahoo, uh, you know, on Yahoo, I use kind of like the average analyst price. We're about three dollars less than that. So I like things with more skin on the bone. So hopefully, or meat on the bone, whatever the the talk, well, the, the thing is. So hopefully, you know, I think that theirs was like, uh, what is the price right now? Eighty five. So I think it was like eight, like seventy nine was the average analyst price. Right now we're at seventy six ish. So we're we're not far off of that. I like when there's more room there, but it's still good room there, but hopefully it sells off uh, for me to be able to get into it because I don't want to get into it when it's not, when it's too far extended. I like finding that value there. They also, I will say this is for me setting up for a good earnings. They have an earnings in February and just looking at high level, I'll look at earnings closer to the earnings date, but so far when I look at it, they're expected estimated to have an increase same quarter. So looking at the same quarter the next year, they're going to, they're supposed to have a significant increase. I think they're still negative EPS, but they're still trending in a really positive fashion. So I think it's going to lend itself to really good earnings uh, in February. So that's going to be a good one. So like I said, Doc, you, we're going to look at net. Also speaking of earnings, you know, I love earnings plays. Uh, the other one I'm going to look at is MU. And there wasn't a lot of earnings this week. Uh, coming up for this week, but this was one of noted notable one to me. As you saw, the other two that I looked at, DocuSign and Cloudflare, they're basically in downtrends. You know, basically they're going down, right? And I'm trying to catch them going down. <laughs> Micron is the opposite, and I really like Micron. I've, I've I've heard of them before. I've never really played them as much, but they're a super interesting one to me. And the more I looked at them. Uh, the more I liked it. And they have earnings on 1.7 aftermarket close. So I think that's a Thursday. So there's still plenty of time to look at it. Uh, so there's a Thursday, right? Aftermarket close is the earnings. And I love aftermarket close. I hate before market uh, earnings because I don't know what the fuck is going to happen. I hate Friday earnings too. Uh, but anyways, I like that. It's on Thursday. Those are really, to me, I like Thursdays. I like Tuesdays 
earnings, specifically Thursdays because you have more time in the week to get in or get out. You know, so later in the week ones are great. Wednesdays are great. Thursdays are great. Uh, Fridays I fucking hate. But anyways, it has that makings. And basically what Micron is is a memory plus and storage play. Basically, it's a semiconductor play. I think they're they're fucking made, you know, in good old America and like fucking Idaho. Who fucking creates semiconductor companies in Idaho? These motherfuckers do. I started by four guys in like a basement of a fucking dentist. I've been doing some research. I like to do research in companies that I'm going to get into. I like going to the website. I like going to look at the careers page. I like going to their YouTube page. I like looking up on Glassdoor. I'll fucking stalk people on LinkedIn and shit. These are all ways that I do due diligence to me, you know. But in that, I found that, hey, you know, the history of the company. But also what I really liked about Micron specifically, taking the, I'll talk about the earnings in, in a couple minutes. So make this quick. I um, only have three. But also what I really liked about Micron was the basically the company culture. If you look at their website, it's very innovation focused. It's very, their website is just fast paced, but it's also like, it's, it's like a, a vision of what they want the world to be, you know, cutting edge, innovative, innovative, uh, uh, you know, and they, like a team, a global team. I think there's, they're, they're basically, you know, thousands of people across, you know, uh, 18 different countries. It was started in Idaho. Now there's thousands of people in like 18 different countries, you know, and their website reflects that. It reflects cutting edge. It reflects innovation. If you go on their career page, they have basically like a very big STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, math focus for students. So they're trying to get students young. They're trying to get them, uh, you know, tuition assistance and they have a lot of great benefits. If you go to Glassdoor, basically it says more of the same. So it's great if your website says one thing, but if you look at Glassdoor and Glassdoor is basically me and you giving uh, um, a recommendation for our company, right, to work there. It's giving a review anonymous. Um, sometimes you can figure out who it is if it's a small company. Uh, but basically, it's basically anonymous people saying, hey, I love working here. I don't like working here. Out of five, it got 3.7 stars. But that is only kind of some of the truth. If you look at what you can read for the people saying it, everything reflects everything that I read. I only read the first or second page. It all reflects what the website is showing. Fast, innovative, great CEOs. People that are buying into the company. The, the, the con was it's too fast. So if you're a company that's moving at a fast pace, especially at that size, it's a great sign. So anyways, I was fanboying on Micron for a little bit, but also looking at their earnings coming up um, into into uh, into this week, 1.7, as I talked about. And the, the chart's looking really fucking good if you look at this week level. Um, they have a 48% growth earnings, same quarter, year over year EPS growth. So looking at the same quarter, a year apart, they're estimated estimated to be about fifty per b increased by fifty percent, forty eight percent, which is really good. Um, and for the past twelve earnings reports, they beat estimates eighty three percent of the time. They only have a nine percent miss. So basically, out of those you know twelve quarters, eighty three percent of the time they hit or ex sorry they exceed expectations. Nine percent of the time, or however eight and a half percent, whatever the fuck the math is. Uh, uh, the rest is split between that one miss and one met expectation. So they have a really good track record of beating or exceeding or meeting expectations. And over the last six earnings, they raised 66% of the time. The next day, the prices went up. So I like all of those things into consideration. I like, I like my client. I think, I think this is looking good. And just talking about this, hopefully I've been looking at the chart and kind of what I'm looking at here. But basically what I saw here was a double top also in a way. Yeah, it was like we said, as we looked at fucking Net, uh, Cloudflare, it was a double top because it was too far extended for the past a month, month and a half. It's been fucking rocketing up. Uh, it found some correction territory here. It's kind of stalled out here. But what's important is it's, it, it wants to touch this 10 email. Sometimes you're not going to have it. But what I see is I see there's, you know, there's been no volume that's been super negative yet. Um, hopefully we see this increasing uh, we saw some bearish or bullish fucking buying coming in. Also, the RSI is picking up at 73, but that's fine because it can run to 76, uh, maybe even more before. Yeah, uh, it can run, you know, about 76. You're going to get some correction. So it's pretty close to maybe stalling out a little bit there, but it's still the RSI is, is uptrending. You have your MACD that doesn't look anywhere close to wanting to converge. It's diverging. It's going faster. You see the solid green here. You see these two lines uh, diverting even more at the weak level, which is great. It ha I would want it to. I wanted it to come down and touch this more. But hey, I like this. I like this here. What I like also at the day level is it did break that support. So if you see at the day level, it hold it hit here, which is what I want to see at the day level. I think this gets really sexy because it was consolidating for you know since about twelve four. So about a month it's been consolidating in this range at a high of seventy four. 
and a low of 70. So it's been really, really tight here. And then now it's starting to break out, right? So now what, when I see on Monday that it's breaking over this, when it opens above this 74 line, which I'll probably play pre-market because that's how much I want. I, I, even if I'm holding the back for this company, I'm fine. I already looked, I already researched this company and I did my due diligence. I'm fucking a fanboy of this company. On top of earnings coming in, that's supposed to be fifty percent over estimates. Fuck yeah, baby! Uh, but when I when I see it break over this line on Monday, it's going to be solidified that hey, I'm going to do it. If it breaks under it, I'd probably play this as a stop loss, so seventy bucks stop loss. Um, so I, you know, price target for me, I'm not going to say price target, but basically, I'm saying hey, things are looking great at the week level. So it's cool, it's good on the week level. At the day level, looking really sexy. What I love is that um, you know, even though it was a really short. No, it was a short week last week. You see increasingly bear, a bull, bearish bullish volume coming in and over average is the peak of it, right? It would have been great to get in on Thursday. I should have gotten in on fucking Thursday, but I'm an idiot and I've been busy. But basically RSI is coming up. At the day level, RSI can go 86 and still make gains right now. It's at 72. So what's that? Another 14 right there at the table that you can kind of lean on in terms of saying, okay, great. Like it short term, it can, it can still make gains for, you know, uh, in, until it hits this correction territory. Like I said, RSI 30 to 70 is generally overbought, oversold, overbought, but it's all rel Those are just general rules. It's all relative to the stocks, you know? Um, and, but what I like about it, RSI is picking up, this MACD is looking really good because you see this curve here coming in for the MACD in terms of converting to be bearish, uh, bullish. And then hopefully we see that blue line go over the, the, the yellow line here, but it looks like it wants to touch which is good in this sense, curving up, touching. Hopefully we see a rocket on take off. I love it. I haven't seen any price target increases come in or go out. Um, so I think people are kind of just waiting, but hey, it's a great sector. It's tech. Tech has been hot. It's been cooling off. Like I said, we're going to wrap these top three up. It's going to be DocuSign. Um, it's going to be Cloudflare. And my baby here, I'm really excited about is Micron. Uh, it could not be anything, but hey, these, like I said, these are probably, I'm, I'm watching them. I'm not playing them yet. I probably will play Micron though, even if it bites me in the ass. But anyways, I appreciate you guys. Follow us here. Give us a sub. I try to do these weekly. I think this is my 18th episode. Uh, it helps me figure out my week. Hopefully it helps somebody else. But if you have any questions, just let me know. I love doing these and people asking me questions. Like even like, hey, where do I start? Oh, do you know about investing? Well, not really. Maybe try eight coins. Learn, learn about it a little bit. Um, and then maybe get started into like a Robin Hood or we both, you know, like go from there, you know? So if you have any questions, just, Hey, this is not for like people that are super, Oh, fucking, let me look at all this technical, financial, whatever. I'm just doing this to, to kind of help my week. And hopefully it perks other people's interest in terms of, Hey, you can do it too. Um, take advantage of this bullet, this very bullish market, because it's not always like that. Uh, so take advantage where you can, but also do a smart, have your plan, plan, trade your plan and plan your trade and trade your plan is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Follow us here, real underscore bullish, wherever. Stay bullish. Good luck to all. Remember to wash your hands, wear a mask, and fucking social distance, you dirty mugs. All right, see you. Peace.